My second master's degree is in the psychology of Alfred Adler. Adler was one of the three great men who, who founded modern psychology. You've heard of Sigmund Freud, Carl Jung, Alfred Adler. They used to get together at a restaurant for years, once a week, to discuss this new emerging science of psychology. What made people tick? They knew it made the body tick. They weren't sure it made people tick. So they started studying this new emerging science of psychology. Ultimately, they split off from one another. Pe great people usually do this. They split off. Freud went his way. Jung went his way. Adler went his way. I studied Adler for three and a half years. If you ever go back to school and they ask you this question, what's the difference between Freud, Adler, and Jung? Here's the answer. Adler got it right. <laughs> because I spent three and a half years of my life studying again. Yeah. Uh, and so Adlerians get together every year, uh, kind of like you guys here, and we have conferences, and we have dinner, and we love each other up, and we say hi, and all that stuff. Uh, so in 1971, we're in Washington, D.C. It's about 400 of us, and um, a famous psychiatrist from the VA, Nick Ioannidis, gets up in front of all of us, and he said, I'm having a party at my house tonight. I want all of you to come. And we looked at each other and said, good Lord, he just invited all these people to his house. I hope he told his wife and his kids, right? <laughs> so this is back when psychiatrists made money. And so uh, we go piling into taxi cabs and go to Nick's house. Now, this is, he had a beautiful home. It looked like Mount Vernon in Alexandria, Virginia. And there was a party going on already in the house. And so all of us who are psychiatrists, psychologists, counselors, educators, students, we go piling into this party, and there's other people there. And um, we noticed there's a Greek dancing instructor in the living room teaching people how to do Greek dancing. There was a Greek chef in the kitchen making oompa cheese. The quiet people are in the library looking at books. There was something going on in every room in the house. We had a blast, all of us who were psychiatrists, psychologists, counselors, educators. Halfway through the party, word leaks out to us that the other people at the party are Nick's patients from the VA psychiatric unit. <laughs> Now, this is 1971, I am not proud of this, but I'm standing with, next to the punch bowl with a drink, and I'm looking at the person next to me, and I said, uh, excuse me, are you one of them or are you one of us? <laughs> I couldn't tell the difference. And that's exactly what Nick wanted. He said, uh, uh, for example, he said, Adler believed in two, we, you and I have absolute control over two things, self-esteem, how we feel about ourselves, and what he called uh, social interest. Do any of you speak German? Oh, we have a couple of Gemeinschaftsgefühl. You know, can you translate that for us? Gemeinschaftsgefühl. So it, it's a sense of community with another person, my fellow feeling with human beings. Is that close? Self. Yeah. See, so, so on the one hand, I have self-esteem. On the other hand, it's my ability to interact with other people. Uh, seeing them as my compatriots. He said in the, in the uh, psychiatric unit, he said, well, for example, if you over-exaggerate yourself and you underplay other people, the technical psychological term for this is being a jerk, right? <laughs> if you over-exaggerate other people and you underplay yourself, we call this being pathetic. But when you're in harmony, this is called mental health. He said in the psychiatric unit, he said people live very scattered juxtaposed lives. He said, self-esteem, social interest. He said, it's a mystery for them. He said, when they come to my house, he said, I want them to understand what normal is like what you and I experience every day. Not every day is perfect, but we're pretty good. We kind of know how to handle ourselves and how to handle other people. He said, people in psychiatric unit, he said, my people, he said, that's not always the case. When they come to my house, he said, I want them to experience community. Ah. So he said, when they come in, I say, Betty, Mary, meet each other, have a wonderful time. He said, then I walk away purposely, and they have to decide, we're going Greek dancing, we're going to go to the kitchen, we're going to go to the library. He said, and they start to understand the value of community, of cooperation, of being with other people. That's our job, too, isn't it?